And hello, welcome to today's scientific paper of the day, if I now speak into the microphone. We've got a cool one today because uh, we just recorded a podcast, it's now Thursday, Arvo, the podcast will be out Friday, but this is a, this is a pivotal paper that, that I find very interesting because for two reasons, and the first one, a lot of you, you know, you may not you know, think much of this, but it's published in a journal called JAMA, which is the Journal of American Medical Association. Now, it's only a short paper, and um, it's like a review paper or a viewpoint paper, they call it, which means that it's a, it's a conglomeration of other studies, and it was published late last year, uh, actually, no, late 2016. So this is a really interesting paper. And the reason why I like about this paper is it's what they term a mechanistic paper. Now, what a mechanistic paper is that, you know, it looks at all the evidence and goes, right, now we've figured out how, whatever it is, this drug works or this stuff works or something about how the body works, you know. And these would have been very pivotal back in the 60s when they were discovering the pancreas and what it did in the spleen. But... You know, because in 2013 we were able to map the gut microbiome, this is all about the microbiome and its risk for obesity and diabetes. So, you know, if, if you went to college with me 20-something years ago and they said, what's the risk factors for obesity? You would say, oh, well, people eat too much and they don't exercise enough. And that would be it. And you could say diabetes, well, similar sort of stuff metabolic disease so the risk for obesity people used to think it was calories in calories out hopefully that is now gone by the wayside because we know that telling people to eat less simply doesn't work we've been telling people to do that for 30 years and we're now fatter than we've ever been so as a species we need to look at alternative ways of getting this right now one of the ways that we've been talking about a lot at atp science is the gut now the gut does form a lot of health areas and it's a new exciting area where the gut bugs, the bugs that live inside your gut, have a lot to do with obesity. Now, why is this paper pivotal? It's because it has reached the Journal of the American Medical Association. They're a very conservative, sort of uh, right-wingy kind of, you know, uh, very dry, very you know, steady published journal. So if it makes it there, it's, it's really quite interesting. And this paper talks about the good old firmicutes and bacterioides, and it talks about how firmicutes don't make you firm and cute. They make you, you know, fat and not cute. And uh, the bacterioides, you know, are the ones that make you lean. And this is nothing new. But what the re another reason why I like this paper is the fact that the, uh, the study actually talks about the mechanisms by which firmicutes make you fat. And you might think, well, why is there a bacteria that exists in our gut naturally? And it's there in huge amounts. It's the most populated thing in our gut. Why is something in there that's making us fat? Well, it's not making us fat per se, but what it does is it, is it enables you to extract more calories out of a certain food. So if you eat a certain food and you've got these bacteria in you, then the calorific value of that food goes up. So you're actually eating more, yet you're eating the same as someone else who's got less firmicutes. Does that make sense? It's a bit tricky, but that's what the firmicutes do. So the study goes on to say this in the point there. It says, relatively high ratios of firmicutes to bacteria not only influence carbohydrate metabolism, but also alter the production of short-chain fatty acids. In particular, acetate production is increased and butyrate production is decreased. And you might be going, well, what does that mean? Well, a recent study found... Um, increased blood levels of acetate cause insulin resistance and increased production of ghrelin. Now, what is ghrelin? What's insulin resistance? Let's talk about insulin resistance. Firstly, insulin resistance means that the insulin is not working in the cells. It can't get the sugar in the cells, so the body has to pump more insulin out. And, and high levels of insulin causes obesity and a few other things too. Now, the other thing is the ghrelin. The ghrelin is an appetite stimulating hormone. So you might come across people who say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm always hungry, I eat, I can't control myself when I eat, I overeat all the time, I ate dinner and all of a sudden I want dessert afterwards. Well, why? Other people can control themselves and it's simply because you could have high levels of this um, ghrelin going in your body because you've got lots of firmicutes. And also, um, it also means you've got lower butyrate levels in the gut, which encourage as a low grat level of inflammation, which uh, in also in, in, you know, causes insulin resistance. So you've got all this stuff going on in your gut. 
And, and what it means is basically that you've got these bugs in your gut that come from your environment or come from eating a bad diet or some people I know even supplement with these firmicutes. They take a capsule with billions of firmicutes in it called lactobacillus acidophilus, if you've heard of that. A lot of people supplement with that or they have dairy foods with this stuff in it, you know, and I'm not a fan of dairy, let me tell you, and, and this is another reason not to have it. So this is what this study is saying. It goes on to say a lot more. But the fact that it tells you how these bugs make you fat, stimulate your appetite and cause insulin resistance, and also it goes on to say that these bugs cause gut inflammation. So if you've got an inflammatory bowel disease or something like that, it could be down to these bugs. They look at the bowel, it's inflamed, they don't know why, it could be these bugs. So this is where we're at at the cusp of these studies. So I hope that's been interesting to everybody. Journal of the American Medical Association paper has come out and said that. So I am stoked that this is in the mainstream media now. And therefore, if, if doctors are, are diligent, they'll be reading this and they'll sort of want to know about your guts. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time.